good to look upon your faces this morning, and I praise God that everybody is breathing. And the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Sounds like some of you are breathless this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Praise the Lord. That sounds delicious. God is faithful. What would we do without the faithfulness of God? We would be in deep trouble because we can't depend upon our own selves. And sometimes we can't depend upon each other, but there is one thing that I know for sure, we can depend upon God. And he is closer than the breath that we breathe. I'm going to share with you part two of Great is Your Faithfulness. The scriptures we read uh, last week was from Psalms 118, verses 15 through 18. We gave you two verses of that chapter, and uh, we will continue with verse 17 and 18 as David is describing his situation with God. And David says in verse 17, he says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. We know that David was in trouble. And he was overwhelmed with the trouble that he was in because his enemies surrounded him. And there appeared in his sight that there was no way out. Verse 18 says, the Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Verse 17, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. When you and I enter the valley of the shadow of death, it's time to have a talk with our souls. Sometimes you have to talk to your soul. My wife reminded me when I was preparing to go into the operating room to speak to my soul. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I affirm that to the physicians and blessed them as I entered the operating room and was placed on the operating table. And you could just imagine the people that were in the operating room and with me declaring that I should not die, but I shall live. The expressions upon their faces. Perhaps, well, Who is he to say that he's going to live and not die because there are so many variables? But God's word is true. And we have to allow the word of God to germinate in our souls, in our spirits, so that we can declare the word of God with conviction. I affirmed it. I want you to know that every fiber of my being was tested at death's door. Before and during and after surgery. I can't recall all the events with my heart only working at 5%. Just imagine that, a heart working at 5%. And my defibrillator was 
reacting based on that 5%. Trying to bring more life into this body that was fading. Verse 18, the Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Deuteronomy 32, verse 10 says, And he found him, speaking of David, in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. Hallelujah for the faithfulness of God and for God loving us in spite of ourselves. And we have problems oftentimes not loving ourselves, not appreciating how God crafted us, how God made us into his image and in his likeness. And we can't love ourselves. That's amazing. In spite of David's sin, God cherished him and referred to him as the apple of his eye. When God favors you, there is nothing your adversary can do to you that doesn't bring glory to God. Hallelujah, somebody. There is nothing that the enemy can do to you that does not bring glory to God. So our constant prayer ought to be, Lord, be glorified in my life. We find ourselves, thank you, that reminds me that I need to make sure that my phone does not go off. Somebody's phone went off. Now I'm set. So that there is no fear in, in perfect love. And God has loved us with perfection. He loves us. He loves us. Do you hear me? He loves us us with an everlasting love. He doesn't stop loving us because we go astray, because we don't always meet the mark. He loves us. He's not like us. We love people conditionally. Come on now. I'm speaking the truth. Hebrews 12, verses 6 and 8, 6 through 8 says, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Whom he receives. See, we've got to come to the Lord. We've got to come into his kingdom. We've got to come with repentance. We've got to come recognizing the precious gift that God has given us through his son, Jesus Christ, that through him we may live forever. Even though this old body of ours is giving out gradually, we got a new one in reserve. It's kind of like when you have a car and you drive that car until the wheels fall off before you buy another one. So we are like a car driving until the wheels fall off. But we're doing everything to maintain these bodies everything to be able to continue to do the work of God. What is chastening? In the context of this verse in Hebrews 12, 6, 
Chastening is to be disciplined by God. Would you rather be disciplined by someone who did not love you or cared about your future? I don't think so. You see, we can resist being disciplined, but there are enemies that will bring you into discipline. You hear me? When you are a captive, whoever has imprisoned you will bring you into discipline, whether you like it or not. But God disciplines us in love. Amen, somebody. Verse 7, if you endure chastening, if you endure discipline, God deals with you as with sons, for what son is there whom a father does not chasten or discipline? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers. If you are a believer in Christ, if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then you ought to entreat the chastening of the Lord. Hello, somebody. Because that makes you, what, illegitimate or legitimate? Legitimate. Because it identifies you as a son of God. And in the reference of son of God, I'm talking about the ladies just as well. Are you going through something in your life now? Is there something happening in your life that is challenging you in this season? My advice to you is to learn to rest in the Lord because there's nothing you and I can do to manipulate the will of God. We try, don't we? Well, Lord, if you do this, I'll do that. Hello? Do we do that? Lord, if you just, if you just answer this, if, Lord, I will just, I'll, I'll be faithful. <laughs> That's the promises that we make, that we break. Everything that happens and that will happen in our lives has a far greater purpose beyond our understanding. I can't remember the time that I talked and witnessed to so many people as when I was in the hospital for three months. I had the opportunity to bless a lot of people, to speak into their lives. And that was because God sent me to the hospital. Hello, somebody. He sent me to the hospital to get a new heart. You know, sometimes we pray, Lord, fix my heart. <laughs> Lord, cleanse my heart. Lord, restore my heart. And we don't realize that sometimes it means that you're going to get a replacement. I am so glad that I have the ability today to share with you we're not victims because everything pertaining to this life and the life to come has been dealt with by Jesus Christ. Hello, somebody. He died for our sins. He was buried in a borrowed grave. He rose from the grave to bind the spirit of fear and death and give eternal life to all who believed in him. Oh, praise God, somebody. And he sent his Holy Spirit to indwell us, to lead us, to comfort us, to guide us, to empower us, to be his witness. He did that for us. 
And not only that, but he says, hey, when you are at death's door, I'm right there. I'm right there. As you're bouncing off of the operating table because of your defibrillators going off, I'm right there. I'm right by your side. I understand what you're going through, but it's nothing like I went through for you. Hang in there, boy. You can handle it. Hang in there, girl. You can handle it. Because I took the sting out of death. There's no power in death. The Bible says to be absent from this body of clay is to be present with the Lord. We have a hope beyond this life, beyond the grave. We have a hope that dwells within us. Oh, praise God. We're not hopeless people. We're hopeful people. We're not victims. As you're being chastened, it is not the time to play the victim, but to herald the victory in Jesus who has gone before us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me in check. Thank you, Lord, for disciplining me. Does Jesus have any witnesses here? There's one over there, okay. There's one over there. There's a few over here. There's one back there in the back. She raised her hand. Does the Lord have any witnesses here? Does he deserve your thanks and sacrifice of praise with the fruit of your lips? This is not the time in the history of your life to be silent, to hold back the praise that is due him. This may sound foreign to you, but the deeper your love for someone, the more you bless and praise them. Come on now, somebody. I guess there's not too many people who've been in love here, who, who's not in love at, at the present. But the deeper your love for someone, the more you bless and praise them. If your love is deep in relationship to Jesus Christ, you want to bless and praise him. For all that he is doing, all that he's done in your life, you do not want to be ungrateful. You do not want to be unthankful. But you want to bless the Lord. You want to praise the Lord. Because you understand that as you do that, you invite his presence and the Bible says that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. So if you are in the presence of God, uh, are you joyless? You're full of joy. You're thankful that the Lord remembers you, that he knows you by your name, that he knows your future. And he wants to bless you. He wants to honor your faith. You see, because it's all about your faith in him and in his ability to save and to heal and, and to deliver you. Our second scripture text is Hebrews 12, verses 11 through 13, and we'll move quickly here. 
Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by the chastening, by the discipline that God gives. Therefore, strengthen your hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that which is lame may not be dislocated but rather be healed. Verse 11, now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present. I did not like whippings, or shall I say beatings. I didn't like it. Did you like it? Because I know you got them. In my day, there was no such thing as time out. Uh, In my day, it was go to the willow tree and get me some switches. Afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. I recall the days of my adolescence when I was driven by foolishness and foolish acts that led to me being disciplined. My uncle would discipline my cousin and me with a razor strap. Some of you may not be able to identify with that, but I can identify with it because I experienced it. It was ugly, and my cry each time was that I won't do it again. Does that sound familiar? It wasn't until that I reached adulthood when I gave my life to Jesus Christ at 20 and got married that I realized the value of those butt whippings that I received from my uncle. You see, I had brothers who were sent to form school, reform school, and jail and prison. My brothers did not live with my uncle. I did. So they didn't get the correction that I got from living with him. And so when I came to maturity and looked at my life, I called him up. And I said, I want to thank you for the beatings you gave me. (laughs) And you would think that, well, you know, I really didn't want to do that to you. You know, it hurt me more than it hurt you. He said, you needed it. The Bible is true. Spare the rod, you spoil the child. We live in an age of spoiled children and adults who recoil from being disciplined for their own good. Come on now. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to them. And anybody else who listens to this broadcast on the web. There are children and adults who recoiled at being disciplined for their own good. You know, we have been around for some time, haven't we? We've learned some things, haven't we? We've gained some wisdom and understanding, haven't we? And you would think that a wise person would receive it, would be happy that you've shared it with them. But sometimes that's not the case. Verse 5 in Hebrews, verse 12 in Hebrews, chapter 12. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. The Lord loves us. And this is not a time to walk in our feelings, but in confidence. 
God is providing discipline needed to be conformed into his image. Hello? The fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22, 23, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Is best manifested under pressure. The fruit of the Spirit is best manifested under pressure. Under pressure. Whatever is in you is coming out. And if the Holy Spirit is not residing in you, then other stuff is going to come out. I'm sorry. But if the fruit of the Spirit is in you, then that fruit is going to manifest itself under pressure. We can say what we want to say when everything is going our way. But when everything gets topsy-turvy and there is resistance and there is rejection and there is hatred and there is murder, do we still love? Are we still long-suffering? Are we still kind? Are we still gentle? Are we still under self-control? I like this New Living Testament version in verse 13. It says, make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. And it says here, mark out a straight path for your feet, then those who follow you, though they are weak and lame, will not stumble and fall, but will become strong. And I pray this morning, your strength in the Lord. Not in the government. Not in politicians. Not in your bank account. Not even in the fellowship of saints. But I pray that your strength will be in the Lord. I am strong. Because he has given me strength. And in that strength is joy. I'll conclude here. Following the Lord has great dividends. Great and precious promises afford us as we follow. Your application, only God knows the exact measurement of discipline you need to be conformed to his image. I can't uh, measure that because I'm limited in my wisdom and my knowledge. But God knows exactly what and how and when we need to be chastened by him. Sometimes we need to know that we're not in charge. Always receive it with a grateful heart because it comes from a loving father. Lord, I don't feel well today, and it just seems as though this sickness just keeps coming. But Lord, I praise you. I thank you, Lord, because... It brings me into moments of reflection concerning your goodness, concerning your faithfulness over the years and the prayers that I've prayed and that you've answered over the years. We have a lot to be grateful for. We have a lot to be grateful for. Near-death experiences, and I know that I'm not the only one, some of you are witnesses. Some of you have been there. But look at you today. Hallelujah. Your cup is overflowing 
with joy. You're so joyous, you just can't help yourself. The smiles are contagious. When you leave out of here, you got happy feet because of the joy of the Lord and the strength that you've received today by being in his presence as a collective body of believers. You got something that's more valuable than what you put your value in. The Lord is with us. He is with us. He is faithful and true and just and holy. I am so glad I'm a child of God. And I have deep pockets and great connections. The Lord has promised that he would supply all of my needs. How deep of a pocket is that? Oh, praise God. Father God, we are so awestruck because we can sense your presence. And Father, we just pray that you would bring a healing wave over this congregation of believers. Father, we know that the Bible tells us many are the afflictions of the righteous, but there is a but, there's a pause. But you deliver us from them all. And Father, we thank you that you're the awesome God that heals us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.